Shut up and sit down. Greetings, fellow Earth travelers. Oblix here. Today, I want to talk to you about the Joshua and Sons Tracer. How y'all doing? So, here's the presentation. Nice gray box with a nice orange stripe here. That does lead towards something on the inside, so nice choice on their part. It is squishy on the top, which just, I don't know, gives it a, a, a feeling above its means you know what I mean it's not just a box it's a squishy box and that just makes you feel better about it at least on the top anyway now the sides are not they're hard um, it is this kind of fake leather feel all the way around even on the bottom down here uh, so not a bad presentation let's take a look open it up take a look at the tracer there you go nice kind of a retro inspired look uh, pop it out here on its pillow. You guys may notice this pillow because this is the one I use for just about all the reviews because it's a nice pillow. Uh, let's set the box aside here and just check out the goodies that come with it. Typical, we've got a warranty card here. Yep, standard warranty card and standard please fill out information and return something I'm awful at doing. So we have a, wow, they really want your information because they give you an envelope with an address on it. Like, please, please send us your information. Kind of begging. And a dirty table. Get off there. And an instruction manual. And I assume this is pretty basic blah -de blah It is very basic blah -de blah Tiny sad little picture. And let's get to the star of the show. The Joshua and Sons Tracer. Now this is model JX1170R. So this does come in, I believe, four color variations. Uh, orange, of course, being one of them. Uh, then there's a blue, a uh, gold and white, you know, with a, a gold you know, side with a white face. And then red. Uh, where this one's orange, it would be red. So the blue is, I believe, a black uh, case. Man, words are not coming out of my mouth today. Uh, so let's pop this guy open here. Now, Joshua and Sons is a, a very perplexing brand for me. Um, I, I can't figure out what they want to be. You know, like you know, Rolex or Tag Heuer, uh, Omega, y you know they want to be luxury brands. Uh, you know Timex and Seiko and Citizen. You know you know they want to be quality. You know mid tier brands that you know just truck on forever. I can't figure out Joshua and Sons guys. They're they're an enigma to me because some of the things they do they do really really well. And some of the things they do are just not really, really well. And it's it's really confusing. Um, but we'll kind of walk through some of those uh, as we go through this watch. Now, I actually own a lot of Joshua and Sons watches, okay? Uh, before I really got into watches, um, you know, when I first really started liking them, I gravitated to this brand. They have a lot of neat styles that I like a lot. So you're going to see a bunch of them show up on this channel. Um, but I will tell you, you know, it, it's, I don't think they want to be a budget brand, but they are a budget brand. You know, it's like, it's, they want to hit above their weight class. And in some ways they do that very well, but the reality is they are a budget brand. And that's just the facts of life, which makes them very affordable watches for everyone. So, you know, you can pick one of these up very inexpensively. And it's a, it is a sharp-looking watch. You know, at a distance, you know, this sucker turns heads, no doubt about it. You know, the square shape, that bright orange, but just a, a pop of it, you know, really does turn heads. This, you know, 
very nice looking band kind of almost antiqued leather uh, even though it's not it's you can tell it's brand new it's just you know kind of has that older look to it and this old retro styling it's it definitely is a head turner um, now it does have a date complication at the six o'clock I like how they also show um, the preceding and succeeding date as well as today's date um, they ooh, a little dirt on there uh, only the 12 is is marked and then you have lines at of course the three the six and the nine and a small branding you know right up at the top you do have indices all the way around they're just painted on um, you know the only the the 12 the line at the three the six and the nine are applied or raised above the you know the um, face I don't know why words are just struggling coming out of my mouth today it, it's pretty horrible look. so taking a look at the back it is shiny obviously and you can see it's a 117 uh, and then of course Joshua and Sons um, you know nothing to write home about but you know they did try to put a little styling on it and you can see on the band brand you know it is a banded brand Joshua and Sons and it is genuine leather and I, I have no doubt about that it feels of genuine leather it smells of genuine leather um, you know some some brands you it's a little sketch even when they say genuine leather you're like yeah I don't believe that um, but I have no problem believing this is in fact genuine leather now I will tell you it is marked a 30 right there which is an oddball size and man I already got this dirty I even washed my hands before I did this review um, so it is marked a 30 but look at these lugs guys they're not normal they're everything but you know they're outside with a, a central captor and their screw in from the sides over here uh, both the top and bottom are that way I do not think you're gonna have a lot of luck finding a replacement band for this guy you know, so once this band wears out if you can't get one from Joshua and Sons you're just kinda hosed but for the price point you're gonna pay for this watch who cares uh, we'll talk about that in a minute it is a branded crown which is uh, very unusual at this price point and a branded buckle also very unusual at this price point I said it's they're an enigma because they do things that you don't expect you know they, they punch above their weight class they do things that you would find at a higher weight class but at a lower price point but then some things they do just you know actually kind of punch below their level it's, it's really confusing so you do have a leather leather keepers uh, twin leather keepers one is floating you know the inside is floating and the outside is fixed which as you know is my preferred configuration you do have this little raised section here that is got some squishy in it it is a very comfortable band guys um, I'm not a huge fan of tapered bands like this where it starts out thick up here and then tapers down you know generally those kinda bug me but uh, this one really isn't bad and it does definitely add to that retro style uh, I just I wish it was more of a traditional uh, lug connection you know so you could replace it you know with a NATO strap or a you know, mesh or you know whatever you want to replace it with you're not going to be able to do that with this guy now let me point out some areas where they kind of fall short you know where I mean definitely quality control is an issue for Joshua and Sons um, you know their, their quality control is lax to say the least and, and you see that across all of their watches you know and I have quite a few as I stated you will find it across every single one of their watches and I will review every one of them that I own and I'll show you the quality control issues now for the price point should it stop you well the price point they want you to pay this watch for yes it should absolutely stop you and you should say heck no and run away screaming but the price point that you can actually buy this for no it shouldn't stop you you should say you know what that's a decent looking watch and I can deal with a little bit of imperfections so for example look right there see that it's almost like a 
like a dent in the middle. Now, I didn't put that there. It came this way. Out of the box, brand spanking new. And, you know, I thought about sending it back, but I'm like, eh, eh, I just couldn't be bothered, you know, for that price point. And we'll talk about the price point here in a minute. Uh, if you look back here on, you know, where the lug is, it's very rough. Even the metal is rough right there. It's like it just, it wasn't filed correctly. It wasn't done correctly, or they just, you know, they ran it over a little too long, something like that. And you have the exact same thing on the other side. You know, it's actually almost sharp. Um, but, you know, again, for the price point, what you're going to do now, we'll say this leather band, too. Um, this side is becoming a problem. This side is holding true. You'll see no play and no separation here or here. You know, if I wiggle it around, no separation, no play. It looks good. But when we come over to this side, you're going to see, see how it separates? You know, this little bottom piece separates from the top piece against the lug there. Uh, that's going to be a problem soon. And then again, it does it on this side too. Look at that. It's gonna, it's going to cause issues. See that separation, especially down here at the bottom. But you also see it up at the top up here. Hopefully, that's showing up on the camera. Um, that means this is weak, and this is gonna, this is gonna break um, sooner rather than later. This side's gonna break definitely before this side does. Um, you know, I have put this through some wear. Obviously, I don't review a watch without wearing it. So, um, you know, it is definitely getting some wear time. And that has, of course, led to that. But again, it's not a band you can replace easily. So you, you're kind of stuck. But again, price points. See what I mean? Enigma. It just it it hurts your brain thinking about these this this watch brand and and how it works. So I keep talking about the the price points. Let me tell you what they are so that you guys know where I'm coming from when I'm talking about this. Josh Winsons right now on their website wants to sell you this watch for three hundred and fifty nine dollars and you'd be a moron to buy this watch for three hundred fifty nine dollars with the quality control issues it has for that much money you should get a really nice watch and you should hold to higher quality standards than is in this watch just that's the the straight honest facts now, I obviously did not pay three hundred and fifty nine or three hundred and ninety five dollars sorry three hundred and ninety five dollars I didn't pay that for this watch. you know I bought this watch on Amazon for thirty four dollars and fifty cents um, That is one heck of a discount guys, <laughs> and for that price, I'll put up with a few quality control issues. That's what I'm saying. you know the band falls apart, which it's kind of starting to do, so be it. who cares? Thirty-four fifty. I'll, I'll buy a new watch. You know, it's not even worth shipping to go buy another band. Just buy another watch. Call it done. Um, yeah, I mean, I I bought it for thirty-four fifty. Right now, they're selling, I believe, for forty-four ninety-nine. So they have gone up a little bit on Amazon. Um, and you can get them in the uh, the alternative colors if you don't like the orange. I think the orange looks great. Uh, that silver with the orange and this brown band looked fantastic together in my eyeballs. So your eyeballs, you know, are subject to you and may see different things. But um, again, at at a distance, the sky is stunning. You know, it's when you get it close, you really start to see those imperfections popping out on you. Um, there is loom on here. It's meh. You know, what do you expect for thirty four fifty, right? Um, of course, at 350, I expect, or 395, I keep screwing that up. 395 dollars, I expect a heck of a lot better loom than is on here. But I didn't pay 395. At 34 dollars and 50 cents, I expect the loom I get. Um, so I'll pop a loom shot in here for you. There we go. Now let's pop this guy on the wrist for you. Now, wrist check of today. I am wearing a Jor Gray. Uh, this is model 8300, if I remember correctly, so 8300. Um, 
not bad. It's got its ups and downs. It's definitely, I mean, it's a definite mid-tier watch. It's got a price tag to it, no doubt. But um, it has some, some ups and downs. Um, but we'll get a review of that here shortly. Let's pop the Jor Gray off. And get the Josh Sons on. I'll put it your way first. There we go. So you can take a look at it where it's face up to you. So it's not a big watch. It's not huge on the wrist. It has a good look to it. Now let me turn it over and pop it my way where I would normally be wearing it. And again, the, the leather feels nice on your wrist. Um, you know, the, the, the failing band up here really hasn't started to, to bother me yet. You know, from a a feeling perspective, but it's going to keep getting looser and start popping off, and that's going to become annoying. Um, but there you go, on the wrist. It's good looking. I mean, full range of motion, no problems there. It doesn't, you know, fill the wrist this direction, so no problems there. Um, buckle rest where it should. It's just a good looking piece. Um, unfortunately, you can start to see right here those imperfections uh, which is why they're problematic because they do show in the normal wear configuration you can see this one on this side as well if it was completely hidden in the wear configuration then that wouldn't be a problem and of course that dent that I showed you there is just bleh. nobody likes that but Again, at a distance, you won't even notice. But that's a quality control issue, guys. That's something Joshua and Son should have taken care of before it even left the factory. And they didn't. So, shame on them. Um, it is a stainless steel buckle, so that should hold up. Unfortunately, we've already talked about the leather's not going to. Let's take a look at the weight of this guy. It's not super heavy. So we're looking at 2.6. So definitely not heavy at all. Uh, so if you like lighter watches and these retro styles, then that's right up your alley. Let's pull out the old calipers. Take a look at sizing of this guy. That's going to be a little wider this way because of the square nature of it. If we go edge to edge, now it does have a crown protector, so it is a little hard to actually get a straight edge reading. We're looking at about a 45. And if we go across the crown, probably, yep, 46, almost 47. And then, of course, lug to lug. Uh, if I can do this with one hand, maybe not. There we go. And boom. Oop, oop, that's not sitting straight. They're not sitting straight. There we go. Now I can't even read that. What is it? 48.9? I don't know. Thickness is not very thick. We're looking at 13. So definitely not a thick watch. We've seen thicker. We've got, I've got, heck, I've got thicker on the table. <laughs> uh, it is thicker than that door gray I pulled off, though. Uh, that guy's pretty thin. But, so, yeah, it, it's. It really perplexes me, this guy. I just, I don't know what to think about it. I, I, on one hand, I really like it, and on the other hand, it, it's got a share of, share of flaws. And, you know, again, I, I can't figure out where Joshua and Sons wants to be as a company. You know, nice brushed finish around the side here when it's consistent, but then there's places like here where it's not consistent. You know, again, a quality control issue. You know, that should have been addressed at the factory before it ever left the factory. Um, you know, nice polished right here. Uh, and actually that, you know, the polished here and the polished inside uh, are, you know, really good quality. The buckle, stainless steel buckles, great quality. I mean, this sucker's solid. You know, looks good. There's no flex. It's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. I just, I really struggle to figure this company out, guys. Now, guys, I scoured Joshua and Son's website looking for additional information on this particular watch, like steel type, 
crystal mineral type and and they're just not it there's really not much there so again you know my policy on that if you don't list it you didn't spend any money on it so this is not going to be a great steal uh, you know if it is you know if it was a 316l they were going to write that on the site they didn't so you can assume it's not uh, assume it is kind of bottom of the barrel steel they didn't list what this was it's not plastic I can tell you that but it ain't much more than maybe mineral glass uh, if anything uh, no coatings or anything that I can tell so pretty simplistic stuff 34 50, for $34 dollars 50 you're not gonna get uh, amazing materials let's let's put it fair I think the best you get is probably the genuine leather band that is kind of falling apart over here. You can actually see this uh, this lug. See how it's drifting behind there, behind the band. It should not be able to do that. Hopefully that's showing up on camera. You know this side does not do that, but this side most definitely does. That is an issue. At least I am really, you know, that is going to be a big problem down the road. But again, they don't list the steel. They don't list the crystal. It, it just is what it is. Uh, now on the website they do list that it's an ISA Swiss Quartz Movement. Um, I'm gonna cry foul on that one because um, back here it just says Quartz Movement. No Swiss. And you can always tell Swiss stuff if you look right down here at the 6 o'clock if it was made in Switzerland, it'll actually say Swiss made. But if it was Swiss materials that were made somewhere else, like Canada or wherever, uh, it'll it can say like Swiss movement, but it can't say Swiss made. This doesn't say Swiss made, nor does it say Swiss movement. So I cry foul. I am pretty sure this is not a Swiss movement. I am pretty sure this is cheapo Chinese o movement could be wrong or maybe they've updated the line you know I did buy this some time ago I actually bought this back in February of this year uh, of 2018 so you know it has been a little bit of time you know perhaps they've updated and maybe now they're using Swiss movement where they weren't before but this I can guarantee you this is not Swiss uh, under any circumstance because <laughs> if you pay for Swiss movement and you do pay for it uh, you're gonna put, you're gonna write it on there again because that's a selling point, and you don't want to sell a Swiss movement, and not say it's a Swiss movement, because you're not gonna get as much money for it. And they want money, obviously, or they wouldn't be trying to hawk it for three hundred ninety-five dollars. So there you go on that. Take it for what it's worth. All in all, I do like it. I have again bought many of their watches. Um, the styling is hard to beat. Uh, they definitely draw their inspiration from other companies. They definitely don't have a lot of their own personal inspiration, uh, to be honest with you. But I can deal with that, you know, especially at the price point that I'm paying. So is it a Hall of Famer? No. Uh, no, it's it's not. It's just a nice watch to pull out and throw on every now and then uh, when I want to do something a little retro, a little different. Uh, you guys know I love my orange, so uh, when I feel like rocking a little orange... But just a little pop of it, but I want this kind of nice traditional looking band. You know, a little, um, not traditional in the sense of connection, but kind of that, you know, that traditional brown color, uh, you know, wear to the office type thing. Um, this is a watch I would wear to the office, um, you know, out casually. It's nothing I would wear elegantly, but it is something I would definitely wear casually, you know, just around town, weekends, weekdays. Uh, to the office after hours because it does have a, you know some loom nothing fantastic but a little bit um, but yeah it's it's a good all arounder especially again at this price point it's hard to beat at that price point uh, that you can actually find it for so that's the Joshua and Sons Tracer uh, JX one one seven O R uh, the O R is the orange part. JX, it's a model JX117, and then they just changed the last two characters for whatever color you ended up with. Um, so OR is uh, silver and orange. But I do think that's all the time I got for today, guys. I sure do appreciate y'all coming to hang out with me, taking a look at this tracer. And until next time, you guys get out there and make some noise. We'll see you.